<laughs> All right, uh, I have the power. It is that time of the day again, uh, that time of the week even. Uh, it's that time of the week for the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It's December. It's the 3rd of December. It's 2018. Uh, the hackpad is in the chat. Uh, Jacob has volunteered himself as note taker. Thank you very much. Please add your name to the attendees list uh, on the hackpad and we'll get started uh, in a moment. Yeah, also if you haven't put your weekly update down, then please uh, add, it, add it in and we will now go for a round of updates. See how everyone has done this week, what they're blocked on, and what they're planning on doing next week. Uh, who is first on the list? Vashko is first on the list. Would you like to give us your update? Sure. Hello. So uh, last week I worked mainly in getting the IPNS over Pub7, IPNS over the HD ready for being merged this week. I fixed uh, several reviews in uh, PRs for both of them. And I also created the interrupt tests to the IPNS over the HD. Now we have uh, interop green for both of the PRs and uh, Alan and uh, Hugo and Jacob also had some reviews, so we are on a good way. Uh, then I also, uh, during the, the interop tests for the DHT, uh, I also found some problems with the new API uh, for files and I'm also fixing the interop tests for that. Uh, and uh, I also worked in the DHT stress tests. Well, last week I had uh, intensive lookup simulation tests. Now I also added uh, shared intensive tests. Uh, for this week, so I want to get IPNS over PUBS7, IPNS over DHT finally merged. I, I'm also working in the lib 2 p daemon client that will be used for the test bed and interop. I also have been reviewing a PR from John Yesse. Uh, there I went also to get merged this week. And uh, I also, if I have time, I want to update the PNS back PR. That's all for me. Any questions or comments? Uh, I have a question. Can you demo the DHT stress tests at an all hands or something? Sure, I can, uh, I can do it next week, I think. That would be rad. I would like yeah. to see that. Cool. Okay, I will do it. Hooray! <laughs> David. Uh, we will have a JSAP fast release with the HD enabled by default for Christmas. <laughs> Is that a yes? Best yes. present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, best present ever. <laughs> awesome. 2018's been a good year. Uh, cool. Uh, any other questions for Vashko? All right, let's, let's move on. Uh, who is next? It is Volker. All right. Um, I have been working on, yeah, some like low level, um, multi format stuff. Um, because like if you read the specs, you find out that they are not really good or accurate. So. <laughs> Fixing a few things there to, together with um, Stephen. Um, and I also work on um, starting to implement the new uh, JavaScript IPLD APIs uh, just to see if the, the specs kind of really work. So it's not like a, will be not a super clear implementation, but just like to see um, if there's any problems. And um, especially with uh, the uh, protocol buffers, which is and of a piece and just to see if it works. And this is also what I will do next week. And yeah, also for the whole multi-format stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going through it and see if, uh, um, like also the JavaScript APIs are, I think, pretty bad if you start coding new things. So it's really good that I do the prototyping to see like where the problems are if you're actually using them. And um, they're pretty inconsistent and yeah, hard to use. So um, yes. That's all. Any questions for uh, Volker? I can recommend if anyone on the JS team hasn't gone and looked at the proposal that Volker's added for um, IPLD uh, API changes, then you should go and take a look. 
because uh, it's rad and super interesting. Uh, but also, you're going to probably have to be using it at some point soon, so you might as well contribute to it or at least read it uh, to know what's going to happen. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Volker. Uh, next person is... is uh, oh, sorry. Any other questions for Volker? No, I see no hands. Cool. Uh, it's me. Um, okay. What did I do? So, uh, yeah, last week added some CID version agnostic uh, interrupt tests. Uh, I put a picture of the, the failures so that, uh, that I've got some work to do. Uh, but we can see that they, it works for Go, and we know that because they have released a version which, uh, which allows that. So uh, I just need to go ahead and implement that so, uh, those things. But now we have some tests that prove when I'm finished doing that. <laughs> uh, so that's great. Um, other things I did, uh, we renamed IPFS API to IPFS HTTP client to better communicate what it is. Um, the object API uh, refactors that I talked about last week were completed and merged in both JS IPFS and the HTTP client. Um, I released JS IPFS HTTP client. Um, there is a, uh, a quick fix. Uh, basically, if you've got a quick multi-adder uh, in your and you use the JS IPFS API, an old version of it or a version of it. Um, to kind of get hold of uh, some swarm, uh, some swarm peers that are using Quick, then it would have failed because it didn't know that, uh, that that you know it doesn't. It's it's basically a, a fix for if you don't have a uh, multi adder in your uh, in your in the codec table. If if like a newer version, newer one comes out and you're using an old version, then you can still uh, you can still see what peers you're connected to. It doesn't just fail. So that's good. Um, uh, it has the object type API changes and the files API refactor. Um, I opened, yeah, a pull request to the interface data store, which I think most of you commented on already. So thank you for that. That's that's super rad um, for switching to like async await, async iterators. Um, and then I used that as a base for doing the same thing to data store level, which was kind of pretty easy because level up have a promise based API anyway. So that's kind of fun. Um, and then I did a whole bunch of reviews. Um, my plan for next week, I'm not blocked on anything. My plan for next week or this week is to um, implement the, so now that I've got the tests for CID version agnostic gets and puts, uh, I can uh, go ahead and implement that stuff. Uh, and I also wanted to hopefully get around to implementing the add from star methods in JS IPFS in time for the 034 release. Any questions for me? All right. Uh, next person on the list is Jacob. Could we please have your update? So a uh, lot of work last week on the JS lib PDB daemon. Um, so I've got an initial branch of that going um, with support for connecting and opening and handling streams from the daemon. Um, I'm also using the daemon work to experiment with the lib PDB async API. Because um, there's a lot of stuff there we need to do with like prefixed streams and things like that if we're going to get rid of pull streams. Um, so I'm doing some of that experimenting there because we need it anyway. Um, so I'll probably be leveraging that and then Bashko and I will um, look at putting a proposal together for what the LibPDB API will look like. Um, and also the LibP, uh WebSocket Star Rendezvous server. O3 has been released, so that also improves the peer discovery startup time, because um, before it was like a 10 second wait to get peers. Um, now when you start up, uh, now when you connect, you'll immediately get the list of existing peers back. Um, so that should be quicker, so that's support for um, peer pad work. Then, um, one thing blocked on is the NAT manager. Um, there's not currently the JS, the JS team assigned to that, so I need that to finish up some package list updates for libp2p. Uh, this week I will, looking at an update to floodsub because it's woefully behind on some of its dependencies, uh, so we'll get that updated, and then continue daemon work and look at the um, what's needed to finish up the ED25519 key support um, for keychain work. And then I discovered we've had like in WebSocket Star Rendezvous server like memory leaks for a while. 
Um, I think I found a culprit of that in the Socket.io pull stream stuff. So I will probably uh, continue to investigate that as well. Any questions? Cool, no questions by the looks of it. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, next person up is Hugo. Yes. So basically, last week uh, added uh, Travis uh, CI config. The pull request is open. You can uh, have a look at it. I started on the Circle CI. Um, also did some work on the GitLab one. Should be ready to go. Everything is green on that on that one. Um, reviewed a, a bunch of uh, pull requests. Um, also did some uh, new release of uh, IPFS CTL with the new uh, IPFS HTTP client. Um, also started uh, add a request about the proposal regarding the errors. Uh, I, really, I, will, I would really love you guys to review that. Uh, this, it's basically an uh, improvement um, on just using the uh, error code as um, uh, we've been using it, especially on libphp. Uh, please review that, read uh, what's there, and give your feedback. And also, I have a, a two pull requests uh, almost ready to go, uh, reducing the bundle size on the API or now the HTTP client and uh, and for the IPFS repo. I just need to figure out the um, a couple of stuff because the, some uh, recent commits changed uh, um, some stuff that increased the bundle size. I need to figure out that, but should be really close to finished. And also, I'm kind of blocked here by another uh, pull request, not a pull request, but uh, like enabling this experimental build on Azure. Uh, I have the issue there linked, so if you can look at that too. Uh, because it basically also reduces the bundle size. Uh, so it would be great to have that uh, enabled by default instead of the current one. And this week I'll continue the bundle size work. I need to go through the smaller repos um, and continue on the error codes. Um, hopefully using the new approach I proposed on the previous pull requests. Um, uh, and also um, continue the MPLEX work with the sync iterators uh, and a bunch of new reviews. So anyone has any questions? Uh, hi. Um, the uh, experimental build, do you just need a review on that? Uh, the experimental build, uh, basically it's already uh, merge, but it's behind like a flag. Um, okay. And uh, just um, Victor opened uh, that issue uh, link there so people can like test if everything works. It probably works, but uh, you should test it anyway um, and f get a feel of it. If you think it's uh, ready to go, we just remove the old code and make that the default one. Just one little uh, different between the between two like a technical thing it's the um, the name of the file the output file but I, I can change that to the to be because now we do, we just do like index.js and with the experimental build it uses the package name for the, for the file name right uh, if it's easier to to just continue with index.js uh, I'll just uh, use that for now, just to get uh, merge, so just to get uh, like experimental being the default, because I really need it for the bundle size work. I'd really like to have some tests run against the built uh, package thing, if it's an experimental build. It's just experimental because it's like a uh, different configuration. Yeah. Any test would be just testing like Bubble and Webpack. It's not, we're not going to test anything. Really. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> we, we've had a bunch of problems with like uh, uh, 
browserify and webpack like trimming out code they're not meant to and and causing issues well to be fair i think it's like uglify um so like it would be nice that okay I, I take your take your point but it would be nice to get to, to have some actual tests run against those those um minified created built artifacts uh but that's probably a point for a uh, another call or something <laughs> yeah yeah we should talk that uh, yeah cool. uh, so my other second question was like the uh lp to pm plex async iterators yeah. how far have you got with that have, have you done any, any like have you got significantly into it or uh not really i mean okay. just in the, in the beginning cool all right i'm going through the like uh, async iterator yeah. stuff uh like figuring out like uh, Packages that have uh, all those uh, utilities we need, like map and those and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned some on some pull requests, um, and I'm starting to do some tests to see if uh, it's uh, like it improves speed and stuff, memory usage at least. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, any questions? Any other questions for Hugo? Okay, cool. Moving on, we have uh, Alex. We have Neoform Alex next. Yes. <clears throat> Hi. Sorry. So I've um, worked on uh, production setup for the benchmarks. Uh, so that's all in place now. Uh, so I've written a bunch of Ansible stuff and uh, uh, Docker uh, files and Docker Compose. Um, the Circle CI is in place, so we're uh, deploying automatically master uh, on uh, any kind of merge or commit uh, to that environment. Uh, and there's also now an endpoint uh, to actually trigger a, a run. Um, what is still missing there, and it's also on my uh, next, is to uh, uh, make it run on a specific commit. Uh, and also the feedback you get from that API uh, currently just gives you some random URL, uh, and that URL should point to something uh, that is relevant to that uh, test run basically um, so that's uh, what I'm going to be uh, working on a little bit more <clears throat> I'm not blocked any questions no no hey that sounds that sounds really exciting uh, cool um, okay moving on then if there's no questions uh, we have Matteo You are muted currently. Uh, hi, uh, not so much work on my side, uh, mainly because there was a node security release going out and then follow up work. So uh, if you guessed what I've been doing that stuff, uh, then uh, however, um, I do have a question for Alan or maybe some everybody. Uh, there is an issue I'm blocked on on an issue for doing any more I did a little bit of analysis uh, on the whatever we uh, on our benchmark data using Node Clinic. Uh, however, uh, I kind of whatever we are benchmarking right now, it's uh, not significant enough to produce good data uh, out of it. We need to get a longer run, so possibly we need to transfer bigger files. So I just need some guidance on what the best files to measure will be. Um, the current um, uh, the current numbers for our benchmarks are pretty good. Um, so if those are the size, and the size that we are benchmarking right now is one megabyte and 10, 10 kilobyte, which are probably small. Um, the, the, the numbers that we have got are kind of good since we switched to use uh, a pre-generated certificate and a pre-generated repo and, and these type of things. Um, so, um, uh, and then I'm blocking on that. So, Alan, if you can uh, chime in into that thing, uh, then this week I plan to dig a little bit more into the issue of uh, getting a faster key generation in place. And uh, yeah, more code reviews for the rest of the team. Yep, that's me. Any more? Any questions? Yeah, David. Uh, very quick suggestion. So I think like you can find exactly what you're looking for in this file. So this is our interrupt tests, and you can see at the top. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can specify a bunch of sizes and directory structures. 
because that, like again, like every file, every directory goes into a graph. It's not directly the file, uh, and so it's interesting to like tune these values. And, and you already have the code base here that you can just like pretty much like copy paste to the benchmarks and run it there. Yeah, I'll. Um, we'll have a look at that. Sweet. Cool. Yeah. Uh, also, in the in the meeting we had on on Wednesday with the uh, with Alex and um, and Ron, there was a uh, we like there's a whole bunch of other um, uh, kind of tests and benchmarks that um, that that we'd like to kind of look into. So my job from them has been to uh, to create a list of those for for you guys, including bigger files and and things like that. Uh, it, that that task is at the top of my stack now, so I will do that tomorrow morning, first thing, and see. So we'll have that pretty soon. Awesome, perfect, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, if not, then um, uh, Alan, there was uh, uh, at some point I sent uh, you folks an email related to writing the Go benchmarks and uh, I didn't get an answer yet. So you need, I need an answer to that question as soon as possible. Yes, also coming, I think, tomorrow. Okay, perfect. We, talk, we talked about it earlier today. Okay, perfect. Okay, fantastic. It's, uh, it's good. I just want to remind that there was this thing, that question lingering, because uh, I think we have uh, Alex for this week and then on and off. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, that is the main concern. That, okay, is, right. that is only my concern. Cool, okay. Um, all right, so uh, who, who was next? Okay, so Ron, please. Yep, so worked on mainly just refactoring the test and kind of putting into a runner, a local runner. Um, so, and that allows you to easily add new tests coming in. So, um, Doing that, I also added the multi-peer transfer, so we're using five nodes now. Uh, four have the file, and then one's going to go get it. So, and I'll doing that. Just, I also updated the README on how to um, add a new test um, using a, just a test template that we have in place. So, um, I think that was pretty much it. Um, I just added, I think, the format. I'm just, um, let's see what else to do. To, added as, yeah, test format on the output, nothing blocking me. Um, so this week I need to add, so we're gonna be able to, um, so for Alex to be able to um, run on a certain um, branch, I need to uh, make some changes also to the local. Um, but that's that should be actually pretty easy since I did the refactoring. Um, then to be able to run subtests locally, individually, um, and this is for the node clinic. Um, and then also for the for some more, more tests that Mateo needs, um, I need to we need to be able to have an option to run these tests also without the pre-generated key. So right now everything runs with pre-generated, um, but then we're gonna put a flag in there to run it without the pre-generated keys also. Um, and then if I get through all that, I'm gonna go back to the browser benchmarks, which I've been on my next list, but haven't got to that yet. So and that's it. Cool, thank you. Any questions for Ron? Okay, no, who, uh, we've got Alex next, the other Alex. Can we have your update, please? Hi, other Alex here. Uh, right, so yeah, I've had a busy week. Uh, I disabled MFS preloading uh, via config in IPFS uh, because it was, you know, the effect was that NPM, NPM on IPFS was trying to uh, upload all of NPM to the gateways every minute, uh, which is fun. If people don't know what it is, it's because there's, until we get the DHT into JS IPFS, we're just periodically pushing your uh, MFS node, in, MFS route into uh, the gateway so that other people can discover your content. Um, yeah, so if you're running uh, NPM on IPFS locally as well, that means it goes into your MFS. So that's going to start happening for users. Um, so like Unix FS2 metadata would be really useful to not have that happen in future. But we're going to get the DHT, so we're going to turn it all off anyway. Hooray. Um, uh, a bunch of performance improvements, like not listing files when you don't have to, because obviously 
if you do that, if you pull down the node, uh, and if it's got lots and lots of children, then it gets really big and really expensive. Uh, the really big one was uh, not this, not searching the entire hamp shard for a given leaf node, which I discovered UnixFS was doing. That was super tedious um, because the ham shard that is npm is enormous, uh, and it was actually loading every single leaf node to find a single a single file. So now it descends via um, working out what the indices would be of a given file because the indices are stable based on the input file name. So it's relatively easy to predict which branch you need to follow to get to the file that you want. That uh, is quite cool. So. NPM on IPFS was ingesting NPM onto IPFS at a speed of about 0.003 modules per second. Now it's doing it at about 0.8 modules per second. So uh, it's gone from taking about six months to ingest NPM to probably about 10 to 12 days, which is quite nice. Um, the download speeds have changed from being like 30 seconds a module to a few hundred milliseconds. Um, which is a massive, massive performance improvement. It means I'm actually going to be able to demo it on stage on Friday, which is cool because I'm not going to, you know, it's not going to take longer to, to install something than I have the time for my talk. Um, so that's cool. Uh, the other thing that I've been doing is trying to get deep uh, requiring of pull stream modules because I noticed one of Hugo's OKRs was to try and make the bundle for it, IPFS smaller. So I thought I'd help out in, in, the, in the only way that I could. I also added streaming methods to the LS. Uh, stuff in MSS because at the moment it just gives you back a, an array of all the files when you say LS me a directory, which is bonkers. Um, even though deep down it's still just arrays because you get a node. Uh, but if obviously if it's a shard, then you get lots and lots of nodes, and this way it will stream out instead of like giving you all of it and crashing your process if, it, if the directory is too big. Um, cool, that's me. Uh, I'm Kind of not really. I'm blocked. I put I'm blocked on a sparse array uh, pull request, but I'm not really because I literally just opened that. I just noticed it was sorting every time you get everything, which doesn't look like it's necessary. Anyway, so for the, uh, this week, I'm going to be doing more performance, writing a talk, giving a talk. That's me. Any questions, Michael? Yeah, uh, one. Can I just get a pointer real quick to the the code where you're doing that traversal into the hamp? Um, it's just we, we in the new interfaces that we're building for collections, we'll want to be doing that kind of stuff. So I just want to make sure that we we have this kind of full use case there. Sure. Um, the the other thing is, so you're you're putting the full tarballs into um, into IPFS. Have we looked at what kind of performance? profile it might look like if we actually decompress the tarballs but encoded them with rabin because most of what's in a lot of those tarballs i think is the same stuff <laughs> um mm. like ac especially across like a particular uh, package it's a lot of the same code if we use rabin so i wonder if we would actually reduce the overall storage and especially the cache hits uh, improve, improve the cache hits sorry if we actually decompress the tarballs um when we stored them and then like maybe recompress them on their way out to make npm work it sounds crazy but i think it actually might be faster no no, no, no. i mean that makes a lot of sense because when you show you know when you um break the files down into their uh you know cid addressable blocks and, and whatever most of it you're, you're completely right like the changes between given module versions are generally going to be very small so we should be able to see some pretty significant uh like savings in the s3 storage that we're using for the whole thing but to be honest like I've just been concentrating on making it fast rather than making it small, but that would be like the next kind of thing to look at. Yeah, I, I think it, it would make it faster in terms of cache hits, right? So it wouldn't make initial gets faster, obviously, it would probably make them slower, but um, the, the cache hits, like once you've ever installed a package, any new version of that package would probably come in faster, I would think. Yeah, yep. I mean, the, the lowest like impact version of using the IPFS uh, on so npm on IPFS repo is just specifying registry equals uh, you know registry dot js IPFS IO. Um, so those transfer speeds, yeah, super important. Okay. Um, are there is there anything we can do as a team to help you with your talk, or uh, anything that you're doing now to make your talk work? Uh, you can use the repo. 
the registry, sorry, use the registry, set it as your default registry and try and set it on fire. Right, you'll probably set it on fire. Um, but hopefully it won't go on fire as quickly as before. All right, you heard the man break the thing. <laughs> go! <laughs> Unleash it. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, any other really quick, we are over time by two minutes. So any other real quick questions or shall we just go? Okay. Cool. Um, all right. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, it has been a pleasure. And we'll see you again next week for another exciting round of what the JS Core Dev team did last week, what they're blocked on, and what they'll do next week. Uh, that's all. Thanks. Bye.